In this video, we're going to take another look at linking parameters, but this time with an Excel spreadsheet instead of using a master model as a reference component. I'll begin by looking at my parameters dialog box. By the way, we are in the Excel linking IPT from our working files directory. Here you can see I have parameters already assigned to some modeling values used throughout the design. At the bottom, I'm going to choose the link button and choose the Excel data sheet of my working files directory. At the bottom, you can tell that there is a start cell option and also a link and embed. Now the linking and embedding is an important topic. Linking means I'm always going to be linked to a file external to the Autodesk Inventor file. So if you move the Autodesk Inventor file somewhere, you have to make sure that the Excel spreadsheet carries with it so the link is maintained. If you choose the embedded option, then you have the ability to open the Excel spreadsheet up inside of an embedded document inside of your modeling file. Therefore, you don't have to manage the link all the time. The advantage to linking is that you have the ability to link the spreadsheet into multiple parts instead of just a single part, which is what the embedding does. Before I choose to go ahead and accept this Excel data sheet, I want to take a look at it. And in order to do this, you do have to have Excel. So I'm going to just right click on this and select open to view it. And here you can see I have an Excel driven design. It looks like my values start here in cell A4. And I also have a nice little guide here that helps me understand what my values mean. Now, in order to link correctly into Autodesk Inventor, you have to list out your parameter names like I have here, then the value, and then the unit of measure. If you do not put a unit of measure here, what will happen is it will use the default values inside of Autodesk Inventor. So if I start with a metric part, then it will automatically revert to millimeters, even though I want it inches. Make sure your parameters here do not somehow overlap with the naming of your parameters inside of your part files. Otherwise, they won't link up correctly when you try and transfer them in or when you try to update your files. So a quick glance here, I can see that my opening angle is slightly different with an underscore, my hubs have different names to them, and my fillet radiuses have different names to them as well. So I should be okay with my naming here. I'm going to select my Excel data sheet, put my start cell here to A4, because that's where my data begins, and choose open. I now have my parameters linked in down here, and I can start assigning these to be equivalent to my values up top. If you do not want to type their names in, you can use the list parameters. Here I will link opening angle, plate thickness, web thickness, inner hub ID, and inner hub OD to my modeling parameters. Now here my values were a little bit larger than I expected. And the reason why that is, is because when I modeled the piece, I had them show up as diameters or radiuses, and maybe I had put my values in a little bit differently in the spreadsheet. So that's something to be aware of in your design to make sure your values update correctly. In order to fix this, I'll just take my linked values and divide them by two. In the equation boxes, I will adjust this in a few more mappings, such as the value for my outer hole diameter, curve radius, inner hub to outer holes, and fillet radius. There I have all my values that I want to be linked together. Here I'll choose done. Notice nothing really changed. My values didn't really update. When I look at my third party folder here, I can see the Excel data sheet. By right clicking on it, I can change the source if my link had changed. If this was an embedded document, I wouldn't have the option to change the source. It would just be embedded here in the file. Here I'm going to choose Edit to modify the Excel spreadsheet to change some values. Change inner hub to 5, opening angle to 120, outer hole to 0.75, hub ID to 1.5, hub OD to 275, curve radius to 3, and the rest of the values to 0.625. I will save the Excel spreadsheet. Then when I go back over to Inventor and run an update, I'll see my values update based on my changes. When I look at the parameters box, here I can see the values updated from my link 
as well as carried through into my parameters that I made them equal to. This is a very powerful technique if you would like to use Microsoft Excel to control multiple parts in your design, or maybe just to control a single part which your sales team likes to create Excel documents for on a sales quoting procedure.